the environment in Afghanistan, it's, um, people think desert's the sand, it's not, it's, it's a dust, it's a fine bull dust um, that gets everywhere, uh, in your clothes, in your weapons, your magazines, up your nose, in your mouth, it's like talcum powder. And coming into land with the helicopters, there's something called a brownout. Where the, where the blades kick up that dust so much that the pilots can't see the ground. And if they misjudge the distance and come in too fast or too heavy, um, it's called a helicopter hard landing. And I was in one of those. And when it hit the deck, it hit too hard and fast. And the shockwave that travels through your body when we're carrying our kit, um, bullets, grenades, ballistic, uh, armour inside that kit, it's heavy and that was the initial uh, problems that I, I started having when that helicopter hit because uh, it obviously compressed my spine somewhat. The, uh, the MRIs showed that I'd prolapsed some discs, I was losing feelings in my fingers, I had been discharged out of the military. Um, and I was, uh, I was fighting DVA. DVA outright just said no. It um, was, a, was a critical blow and has been one of the major causes of me spiralling down into that hole of depression and eventually I, I made an attempt uh, on my life. Nick Shelley is a 37-year-old veteran who served within the Australian Defence Force for seven years. He served within the 2nd Commando Regiment in special operations, specifically within the area of intelligence. He served two tours of Afghanistan with the Special Operation Task Group, as well as the Tactical Assault Group on Counter-Terrorism. I love my country. Um, quite patriotic. It's the best on earth. I, uh, I joined up because I, I believed and I wanted to contribute. I wanted to give back. Like many of the veterans of this country, Nick has a long list of mental health and physical injury stemming from that service. Despite his highly esteemed and incredibly brave service to his country, he has had to appeal three major conditions to the Veterans Review Board, as the Department of Veterans Affairs did not accept that they were service related. I was always told that over and over again, if something happens, whether it's in training or whether it's in war, you'd be looked after. I was so wrong. These conditions include a C5 implant, a C6, C7 fusion, lower back L4, L5 degeneration, and constant headaches. The Department of Veterans Affairs has been slammed after News Corp revealed it is spending millions of dollars to fight veterans' compensation claims. Despite being classified as having 80% physical impairment under the Military Rehabilitation and Compensation Act, Nick is being denied compensation for his helicopter hard landing injuries. Furthermore, when the incidents took place, he was informed by the Department of Veterans Affairs that he had to pay for his own surgery. I know that each and every single day, Australians greatly value your service. It's the fight afterwards and the substandard care that has really, really caused me to go over the edge and attempt to take myself out, kill myself. DVA's non-clinical insurance doctors have absolutely no military experience and often no medical experience either, 
They have bastardized the Hippocratic Oath by trying to outsmart broken soldiers with equivocal terms and never-ending retrospective changes to complex and confusing legislation. Christmas has always been a really special time of year for our family. When you consider that these veterans frequently have physical, neurological, central nervous system injuries like Nick's, the complexity of this adversarial nightmare is a criminal discrimination, it's a criminal assault of the disabled, and it's time these doctors lost their medical registrations. The Department of Veterans Affairs is beyond adversarial to veterans and their claims. They are criminally negligent, and it's time the leaders of the Department of Veterans Affairs and the minister who oversees this billion dollar insurance scheme go directly to jail for the unending treasonous harm and misery that they are causing. Let's look forward to 2020. We're an amazing country. We're an amazing people. And 2020 is going to be another year which we demonstrate why this is the best country in the world in which to live. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas.